Hi, this is Frank Orlando. It's August 6, 2024. So, um, today was a real... Every day lately, there's been this pressure to make something happen, to make me go. And, uh... They've been doing it for a long time. I'm making this video, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but I am, uh, I'm getting to the point where I can't take any more. So uh, my girlfriend in here, she's not a girlfriend. She's a woman that's lived off me for five years. So I come home from work today, and she tells me to go. Just go. This has been told to me by two employees. One of them really isn't an employee. He's a son of a manager. Of a... He tells me to go. Go where? I can't take any more. They've told me a lot worse than that. Tonight, outside of my home, a Hispanic woman walks up to some other Hispanic people and says, I want this man out of his home. I got a family that needs to move in that trailer. Now, I don't know who that woman is. I don't know who the manager of the park is, and I've lived here five years. So, I don't believe in managers. There's some a couple of guys, when I first moved in here, I thought the manager was in trailer 66. Then, I thought I saw my sister approach somebody in trailer 63. I thought that was a manager. There's some guy named Mo or something. Mo or he's got some nickname. He's got several names. We won't describe him out. I don't know if he's friend or foe. But sometimes I haven't really liked this guy and his approach. But lately he's been out of way. But he does a lot of work around here. I thought he was an employee. I don't think anybody is a manager of this park that have been pretending they've been in charge or doing things. I think they're people that work underly in this park to push people out of their homes to make money. So I don't know what their relationship is, but there's something screwy about this fucking park that I'm living in. I got put in here to die, I think. This trailer park has a lot of Hispanics that got pushed into here. I really resent it because it makes me feel I'm not Hispanic. I am an American and I am Italian, Irish and German mixed with an Italian last name that appears that is also used as a Puerto Rican last name from Italians that moved into Puerto Rico. I have an Italian last name but I look mostly German and Irish but I have Italian heritage. My grandfather was supposedly Italian. So I, you would think I would fit in, but I don't speak a lick of Spanish, and I don't speak a lick of Italian, because I'm all American. Anyway, I'm a gringo to these motherfuckers in this park, and they brought too many of them in here. I don't mean to be racist, but they hate me. I didn't do anything if they mind their business, but having people walk around you and say, I want your home. You don't like those people when you don't care what race they are. But when they come up to you and they say, I want your home and you're going to be out. I own my home. Today, a co-worker came up and made some awful comments. One of two people today that decided to say, you're going to go. Another comment was that every day you come to work, you are working for nothing. Because we will take it later away from you really soon after. So you're wasting your time coming in. You do not deserve to work to have a job and live. That's what is being told to me. Do you understand? That's what's being told to me. I am being mobbed out of my personal belongings in my home. I will be called crazy, which is what they want. So these people have been going to my job, back and forth, paying my girlfriend, who isn't my friend. I had her an eviction. She's still in my house trailer. And she is, I've had things lifted out of my house. 
So apparently she just gave it the keys and let somebody come in and take what I want, what they want. And today she said to go. She can't be nice. My phone was hacked today, called 911. I didn't do it. It was in my pocket. I'm just walking. How did it do it? I didn't use the phone thing, so somebody's hacked into my phone. I just had to replace my phone. My bank account went from $1,700 to $700 real fast. I was double charged a couple weeks ago on my electric bill. June 17th or 18th, I paid $150. July 17th, I received a letter stating that my power would be cut off. Now, I paid the complete balance June 18th. June 17th with a letter that they're going to cut my power off. July, July 17th. July 21st, the due date, I guess, was July 18th. They charged me $290 for being a few days late. I called the power company, I paid the bill, and I said, I paid you June 18th, and why did you do this to me? They uh, couldn't give me an answer, and I asked, when is the next due date? It is August 29th, so I guess I will need to pay $150, or they'll shut my power off again, I guess. So apparently... They don't feel I deserve power. I can't believe this. I have be I might be a couple days or a few days off. I mean, this is really malicious. I mean, this is really horrible. I don't get my mail. It doesn't come regularly. And they stop sending me texts. So I don't know what's going on. I try to pay my bill pretty close to being on time. But I don't get my mail regularly. So I really would like to see Duke Power. We need Tico. I would like to see the billing center. They hire all new people. If Duke Power is doing it, they hire all new people and use a different computer system, go from a completely different region. And if it's an all black crew, make it an all white crew. I don't care. Just something different than the crew that's doing it now. Whoever is in charge, they be unin charge because I don't like what Duke Power is doing to me. Okay, because they overcharged me, and that's pretty brutal. So, <clears throat> see this here? This is uh, my uh, coffee. My, someone screwed out two screws. I don't know what happened, but uh, a lot of things have been breaking in my house. This woman in here. Uh, I, after I let her stay here for five years rent-free, and she's telling me I need to go. She tried going outside and screaming so basically I didn't have a choice the police came to my door and she's screaming for no reason I didn't bother her she just it doesn't take much she just decides I wanna you're in my presence you're in my way you're in my view so I'm gonna scream after five years of living with me she hasn't paid rent I pay all the bills it's not her house she uh so basically the police came. I said, she used to be a stripper. It's not a lie. When she was 18 years old, she was a stripper working at the dollhouse. So everything around her is centered around money, about taking it from men. I love her. I love the person I knew before she worked at the dollhouse. I knew her and met her at a church. I don't have any idea what her life is. So there's some jackals around our trailer park, I guess, somebody that has been suggesting that she is a prostitute. I don't believe that at all. I want to, I don't know anything about it. I don't make any money off of her. Uh, she doesn't even pay rent, and I don't collect any money from her. I have known her since she was 18 years old, and I have let her stay rent-free for five years, except for the first month. And somebody just hinted that she probably couldn't take care of herself. She is hurting me. It's either this because someone is pressuring her or she's took into a criminal group. I don't know what's going on. But she's not herself. She needs counseling or she's just... But I don't like her with me if she's going to continue hassling me, helping these people come in and take what they want out of my home or whatever. So here's the thing that I want to talk about. 
I've been a victim of mobbing for a long time. And I've lost homes and jobs and I picked my life back up. I, uh, unfortunately, I was a born again Christian for up until I was about 24. And then I started hanging around musicians and artists. The church group that I was part was a very strong musical group. And I had this real desire to go out and outreach. But I had really left the church as well and got lost in it. But still a part of me was outreaching. And I got involved with what they would classify as a cult group. But it was just a real free-spirited group of people that were artists, musicians, and travelers. And I want to say that maybe I made somebody mangry that was involved in crime. But I just was there to, to be around musician and artist. I don't do drugs and I never sold drugs. And I want to also state, for the record, I haven't really had sex since 2006, willfully. And one night I went on a Match.com date and I went to this woman. We had, I fell asleep, woke up, and we were having sex. But outside of that, and it wasn't willful. I don't know who I was having sex with because it was pitch dark. But I went to bed with a woman that I didn't know I met online. But outside of that, I have not had sex with anyone since 2006. I don't call that sex. I don't want to refer to it as rape because it's not something I couldn't forgive her about. It's just I don't know who I had sex with and I didn't propagate it. <laughs> All right. I don't know what to say on that. But... I haven't. I have lived a clean life, a celibate life since 2006. And um, anyhow, in 2009, I lived in a trailer park with a motorhome that I built with my hands. And the real interesting thing is William Ferry on Palm River Road, there was a Winn Dixie. And he did a horrendous crime. It was horrendous. It was in the mid-80s. And I think his son committed it later on. There is some powerful message. And I want to say that it is the most evil, demonic thing that ever happened. And I'm not, I want to clarify that I am not defending William Ferry's actions. And nor do I want to myself to be referred to as that person because I am a born-again Christian and I was involved with a non-violence group. But I want to say that there is a weird parallel between me and William Farrell in a couple ways. The weird thing is I am a targeted person. And about a year ago I passed two men. They were laughing and they referred to me in the same manner so this leads me to believe William Ferry was a targeted person by a vigilante or hate group. In 2009, I walked into a laundromat and then I went over to a grocery store. Well, the weird thing was, it was the very same grocery store but a different chain that it took it over where the firebombing went. Two men followed me, and I won't describe the race, but it has something to do similar to what's going on around me in this trailer park. Very strange. I think they were involved in crime. And I think that they still hassle me today. Possibly involved in organized crime. I, the next day... I went into a business and they acted really weird like I was a dangerous criminal. I walked myself over to a police substation in that same very strip mall where William Ferry burnt. It's no longer there. I think it left after a so it's in such time. But it was there in 2009 was a police substation. I asked the police officer and I gave him my name. Is there a warrant for my dress? with the full desire to surrender to the authorities because I had the way I was being reacted was suggesting that I had committed a crime. I am, they said no, and but I continued to be harassed for years. I went to Jefferson County because I couldn't find work 
because maybe possibly these people so I would go to different stores and I would be harassed so I got to where and I didn't even have a car they broke my cars it's part of the reason I don't drive cars because they won't let me drive I'm a bicyclist by force I'm forced to be a cyclist so I turn it into something positive and say well I'm being good to the environment and I'm saving money it really is a positive thing if anything else it is a positive thing to ride a bicycle but I the real reason is that I kept having damage occur to my bicycle my automobiles I went through three cars in one year and I went to mechanic school and determined that it wasn't I was not able to keep a car because of the hate crime group I am making this testimony so uh, I went to Jefferson County and I lived there for a year and a half I went through four jobs and finally I couldn't find a job and transmission oil was sold on the shelf for, and I won't tell you the company because they probably deserve a lawsuit but I never sued them they're a local company and I won't hold it against them because they employ a lot of people in Tampa but let's not hold it against them it's just somebody made a mistake and I don't think it was an accident that it was put on the shelf when I happened to go in there. My little car was using a little bit too much oil. So anyway, my engine blew up. I'm in between jobs and I couldn't find any work. And I'm about to be stranded out in the country in Jefferson County, 37 miles from Tallahassee and 37. I was about to run out of luck. So I had to go back to Tampa. So I've been struggling for years being constantly harassed but right now I'm in a mobile home and I'm being mobbed and I know it and I want my friends and family to know they have decided that I don't deserve a job and they come up and they make comments they get different people but this trailer park I kind of am wondering that maybe they got a group of people that are pushing people out of this trailer park to make more home sales and they don't care about people's lives that they destroy. And I wish they would get busted by the police. I want the people that are harassing me that are going to steal my... I would like my trailer, if I am forced out of it through illegal means, to be destroyed. So it cannot be resold. I am making this posting. So I want to give a warning about William Ferry. I am wondering just in the back of my head if William Ferry was a targeted person and he decided he needed to exact his revenge back on the community that a group a large group of people were networking around possibly maybe to push him out of his job push him out of his home and he had revenge and he had a family he obviously had a son I don't know and it, he was a terrible man there's no excuse. I want to say that I believe in nonviolence, and I was a part of a group that believed in world peace. And I was an ambassador and somewhat of someone that used to be looked up until I was ruined by a large group of people and musicians and artists to spread world peace. So I really hope and pray that I don't hurt anybody. And I want to say I don't. But they want to destroy me as a human being. So, uh, anyhow, um, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be around if this group is allowed to continue. But I want to give a warning about people that decide to join vigilante groups that operate on misinformation or partial correct information that you can do a lot of harm and you could undermine your community. But there is a group of people that are possibly benefiting by destroying other lives they enrich themselves. They have no soul and no remorse and no feelings for other people around them. Maybe there are narcissistic personalities. I've kept seeing a thing to watch out for narcissistic. I believe we have more people that do not have Christ and the love of Christ in them and they have no sense of remorse at all and they go after people on stupid reasons and they are just an agent of destruction based on misinformation that's handed to them 
I am a wonderful, decent human being, and I'm about to lose everything because I'm being mobbed out. And I'm boasting this. I have been a targeted person for a very long time, but I am a wonderful person. I've endured this for a long time, and I deserve peace and, and respect. I, was, I am a wonderful person that has had morons that have harassed me for far too long. Now, I had made a mistake of being around some crappy musicians that weren't really musicians, but just lo low-down dogs that were involved in crime, maybe. And I made a mistake, and, and I made one of them angry or hit on their girlfriend, maybe, or something. I don't know. But I really am a, I mean, I, I'm a born-again Christian, and I have always had it in my heart. And there is somebody that's putting out misinformation. And I'm, I, I have done whatever mistake I made in the past. I'm cleared of it. I'm tired of these people wrecking my life, thinking that they can get their way with me. I'm tired of it. I'm tired, but I warn this community you go after people and you target at them. You could push something very evil out back into your community. You reap what you sow. You keep hurting people to make money or you keep hurting people because you are angry and you feel like you need... The police are there to do their job and there are judges and we have a system and I ask you to follow that. Do not take justice in your hands. Do not join a hate group and hurt other people, please. Through ignorance. I'm asking you to please do not go out and target people. Do an honest job and make an honest pay. Find a way to make money honestly. Stop hurting people around you in order to get by. You, we, we need people to, oh, the word of God, we don't, you know, a lot of people think that Christianity is dead, but there was a lot of good values and wisdom in the Bible that told us about how to treat our neighbors. And I'm not trying to preach. I'm just saying we are making a shitty world for ourselves when we throw God out of our lives. We crack and destroy other people's lives with no remorse. This is the world you leave for your children and grandchildren. That's all.